Hi again. Well, here we are about to start two new projects. My fiancée asked me to build her a coffee table. I've got some old planks from a very old barn here in France, some oak planks that would be ideal for this. Plus, I've got one piece that I cut several years ago from a piece of willow that drifted down the river. I cut this myself with a chainsaw and it's been maturing now for all these years and ready to use. So, I'm going to use these two designs, uh, which she chose, to take parts from, plus add some of my own designs to make it more personal with the bars at the end using the different coloured woods. It'll be a square coffee table with a drawer. Right, let's get on then, shall we? Beam me up, Froggy. We miss you. Of course, designing your piece is also another important factor before you even start. How complicated you want to be on this is up to you. In this case, you can see that I've designed this computer table um, and I've had to work out all of the materials beforehand because I haven't got a lot of money, so same as you, I have to work out uh, the amount of wood I need not to waste anything. So you see here it's a very complicated drawing and every single piece of wood has been measured to get the most out of each plank that comes to size. But it may be a very simple design as the one I'm going to show you on the round table. Um, just to give you some basic ideas, and you may even change your ideas as you go along. Something creative like the tables we're doing, then I've changed my ideas several times as I go along. But with the computer bench, it had to be just so. So whether you work out a drawing a quick sketch on card, or whether you do it on a computer like this, it's up to you. But you do need to have some idea of what you're starting with, to have a cutting list, to have an idea of the shapes you're going to uh, put together, the joints you're going to use, how many pieces of wood you're going to need, especially if you've got to go out and buy it. Um, with the computer table I had to go out and buy it, with these uh, ordinary oak tables I had the planks in the shed, I, I certainly now have enough of them to use, so I can add a bit more or take it away as I wish, providing I, I know it's going to all fit together and be a good plan in the end. Let's take a look at what tools we might need first of all then. Uh, these are the old traditional hand tools, and of course we'll need power tools as well. You can get away with these if you just want to do a lot of hard slog and hard work, but it is very useful to have the electric tools as well. As you can see here, we've got two ordinary metal hammers, uh, ball peen hammers with the round heads, a wooden mallet, a whole series of chisels from a one and a half inch right down to a sixteenth. And of course, they're kept very sharp, they have to be. Um, the basics of the other tools won't go into all of them, but a pair of pliers, very useful. Um, the cross cut and rip saws, a small uh, tenon saw, hack saws. Um, a spirit level is very useful to check the height of your table to make sure things are level. Um, these other tools you may not need, certainly a little ruler, you're going to need a ruler, and I've got an ordinary old fashioned brass one there as well, which is very useful for measuring flat surfaces. So basic tools there, um, then if we go on to the electric ones, this object here, which is uh, an electric crosscut saw, it was a very useful machine for cutting off either 45 degrees or 90 degree angles, of small pieces of wood up to say three inches, a router for making uh, nice edges and moulds, a lathe of course is very useful, we could we, we turn the handles in this case, small hand jigsaw, an electric sander saves a lot of work and then this big jigsaw here, great big um, cross cut which we can change the blades in for finer blades as well but will handle those nice big bits of wood. Another electric saw here, rip snorter, this time it uh, gives you more freedom, you can cut longer lengths of planks or across and finally of course an electric drill. We have got hand tools for most of these but these save so much work for us. With these uh, tools in your workshop and all the ones I've shown you, you certainly have nearly everything you need. You also have these, this one a hand plane, a triplane, which is uh, very useful for doing the final smoothing of the articles. Electric planes don't always give you that very fine smooth finish. Um, the smaller jack plane, then surf forms as well these cheese grater type planes which have different surfaces. This one's got a flat edge, I have one with semi-curves and a nice round tubular one there for getting round to the curves on, on, on objects. Um, my moulding plane 
my router. In this case it will give me moulding edges or as you'll see me do for fitting the uh, base of the drawer I can cut a groove into the uh, sides of the drawers with this one. Different blades of that as you'll see later. G clamps, very important, small and large. And of course the sash clamps which you saw earlier, these long ones, if you're going to make furniture, a couple of those very, very useful. You can actually get uh, fittings for these to make them out of wood. You can have this bar in wood and buy these parts to fit and drill the holes yourself. Allen keys, very useful because a lot of tools require them to uh, change blades and so on. Screwdrivers, um, various types of screwdriver with the Phillips head, the star head and then the panel, the, um, the flat headed screwdriver and my carving tools of course, very very useful, all my various gouges and so on if I want to do a bit of carving, not only as a piece in itself but actually into the furniture. And there are many other smaller tools here which could be very very useful, a good stock of screws, various nails, plugs, stains as well um, and polishes, waxes. And of course the drill bits for your drills and various drill bits and attachments you can get. Now there are more than that but of course these basics will certainly do you for the sort of work we're doing. Okay, first of all let me explain my thought processes here. This is the piece of willow I talked about which I want to be a bar at one of the ends of the top of the table to give a light bar. And I'll have a slice of oak at the very end which I'll stain dark. So I'll have the natural oak at the whole table, then a light bar at each end, then a dark bar. This will also stop the table from warping because the grain across the end of the table will stop the other uh, plank from warping that way or that way. And in fact, <coughs> one of these lovely planks has already warped, which is a bit of a nuisance. I mean, this beauty here, which would be ideal for the top, has warped quite a lot. And rather than take that one, plane that one right down, I'll use it in sections for the legs, and maybe for another uh, piece of work later. This one might, in fact, make a better tabletop because it's not as warped, even though it's not quite as wide. And I have to take two sections out to glue together. Of course, we'll have to uh, be slightly innovative. We'll have to be slightly innovative as we go along. This plank is actually badly warped. This end, as I was saying, this end isn't so bad. We need two one-meter lengths, and to get that out, I can't get out of one plank. <coughs> so I'm going to have to use the two planks and use the warped part, taking the legs out of, which will plane up, and the two good halves of the other planks for the table top which wants to be a metre long and 60 centimetres across, so we can afford to lose a little bit off the edge of this anyway. I'm going to do that off the other plank as well. And as you see here, just how warped this plank is, especially as it goes along. You can see using a straight edge there. Although down here it's not so bad, but it's still not planing up. So our next job will be to uh, cut this off and then trim any edges to length, plane them down, ready for joining up, because we need to join these two planks before we continue to do anything else. To join them, we're going to drill holes all the way along and put dowels in and peg the two together as well as join it to give it extra strength so it doesn't move. Right, we've marked off our 90 degree angles, our straight edges, using a tri-square to make sure things are square to the edge because we know these edges of the planks are actually square and clamp down the board of the table with a G-clamp for safety because when we're using these power tools we must make sure things are nice and secure and safe and not going to move. Now, we rip snorter because these planks are very heavy and very hard Take a big saw to, do, to, to use on something like this. Okay, we've cut our two pieces and uh, we can afford to lose six centimetres off one of them. And that's just a slight split this side. Obviously that's where it makes sense to take it off. Next we're going to need four legs. One old trick to get a straight edge once you've measured is to run that knuckle against the wood and then hold it still as you draw the line along and you'll find that you get a perfectly straight line. You don't get to split your fingers. 